welcome to Laptop Powerwall episode 12, soldering up the fuses, or at least starting to. And so I've got, got the battery pack, I've got some slips, some Kapton tape in case I need that, some of my metal strip, and fuses, fuse wire, 5 amp fuse wire, soldering iron, and flux pen. So let me get started. Uh, so the plan is strips like this between the pairs of pairs of pairs and then a fuse wire from here to here to here and all the way across and so on. There. And I want a whole bunch of those. I'm just flexing these bits here. All right. Just a small amount of solder because it's a tiny fuse, it doesn't need a lot. And the quicker I am, the less heat goes into this into the batteries. That's good. What side did I flex that side? Alright, I'm not sticking this down at all, my assumption is that uh, 24 tiny fuses holding this in place will be plenty, we'll see if that actually works out. How does that look? That looks quite nice. I think this is going to work. So if I was being really sensible, I'd put a curve in every, every one. Maybe I should do that from now on. Alright, looking, looking pretty good. These um, cheap rolls of fuse wire are incredibly short and they're like four dollars, three dollars each. So I've got um, a much longer roll on order. I think the S Curve is a much better idea than straight than straight fuses. So I might go back and redo the first ones I did.
that might work. We shall see. Okay, that's nice and solid. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the um, features of using this um, strapping as bus bars. So um, this is 7 mils by 0 0.2, I think, mils thick, which is wickedly sharp. Um, I'm always cutting myself. Um, the the nice thing about this stuff is it, it has um, a theoretical capacity of 20 amps, um, that cross-section, and um, but it's thin enough that it's reasonably easy to solder. So I can put a tiny wee dab of solder um, on the end of the battery, tiny dab on the bus bar, and um, make a really quick solder joint so I'm not putting too much heat into the battery which is good. I am just, uh, when I'm soldering them up all I do is lay that down and solder join them with the fuses so this is held in by the 24 fuse wires which I think will provide plenty strong, strong enough um, mechanical connection. Um, it feels feels fine. Um, you can see I've, I've put a nice curve in my fuse wire so that if there's any um, any flexing or anything going on with my pack, um, if I have to manhandle it to do some maintenance or inspect it, um, that curve will mean that it's nice and flexible and the, the um, electrical joints should stay in good good condition. Oh, one, one other thing, I've been watching um, with great interest HB Powerwall on YouTube, who is doing something slightly similar but much bigger, much more grand. I've got 48 cells per group and then seven groups. I think he's got a hundred in his, his group, so it's really long. And what his plan is to have a, a bus bar, a really long bus bar, or two, and then join them at the ends, join the groups at the end. What that means is that all the current has to flow through the current, through the end, to get to the next cell. So his bus bars need to be super thick. My plan is uh, to do what I did with my last one kilowatt pack, is to have um, three straps across here, which will give me a theoretical top current capacity of 60 amps going through that way. Um, so I'm that to that and then underneath from there to there and then to there and so on. So that means I don't need to have a massively fat bus bar like HP Powell. Um, his bus bars seem to be causing him an awful lot of grief. If it were me, I would suggest using thinner bus bar strap and joining them sideways. But he's got quite a strong aesthetic sense, uh, whereas I'm, I'm a bit more focused on how easy it is to slip together. Uh, let me know if you've got any bright ideas or opinions on what I'm doing here. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Cheers. Cheers.